Unlike the majority of black Americans, Oprah Winfrey has no detectable European ancestry. In this episode of Life with Dr. Trish, we will discuss the ancestry, family tree, and background of the one and only Oprah Gail Winfrey. Oprah was born on January 29, 1954 in Mississippi to Vernon Winfrey and Vernita Lee, who had one night together. Vernita was 18 years old and Vernon was 20. Oprah was her father's only child. However, her mother, Vernita, went on to have three other children from different relationships. Oprah's half-brother, Jeffrey Lee, was born on December 14, 1960. Sadly, he died of AIDS on December 22, 1989. Allegedly, Oprah did not always have the best relationship with her brother, but did reconcile with him before his death. Oprah's sister, Patricia Lee Lloyd, was born on June 3, 1959. She died in 2003 at the age of just 43, allegedly from a drug overdose. Oprah tried to help her sister by putting her in rehab twice. For years, Oprah thought she was the last remaining child of her parents. Then in 2010, she discovered she had another half-sister, who her mother had given up for adoption in 1963 when Oprah was eight years old and living with her father. Ironically, this sister was also named Patricia. Oprah confirmed the relationship through a DNA test and made the story public on her talk show in 2011. Oprah told her newfound sister, it feels to me like you are Pat on the very best day. She went on to say, you are what she wanted to be without the drugs. Oprah's youngest and only remaining sister spent time in foster homes before finally being adopted by a loving family. She worked low paying jobs and struggled financially while raising her two children. Since connecting with her long lost sister, Oprah has paid for Patricia to complete college a degree in social work, and paid for a new house for her and her family in Wisconsin. She also allegedly helps provide for Patricia financially. Oprah also financially supported her parents before they passed away, even though she had a rocky relationship with her mother over the years. Years ago, Oprah shared stories of how her mother mistreated her and favored her sister Patricia over her as she had lighter skin than Oprah. Oprah also shared that her mother had her sleeping on the porch as a child while her first sister, Patricia, was allowed to sleep in the house. Despite this, Oprah cared for her mother until the day she died. For the first six years of Oprah's life, she was raised by her maternal grandmother, Hattie Mae Presley Lee, in Mississippi, while her mother, Vernita, lived in Milwaukee and gave birth to her other children. Oprah's grandparents had no indoor plumbing. Her grandmother taught Oprah to read at an early age and taught her hard work. Oprah was smart and did well at school. She skipped kindergarten and second grade because of how advanced she was. Her grandmother, however, was also very strict and once beat Oprah until she bled through her clothes for spilling water. Oprah was later reunited with her mother and half siblings in Milwaukee. Oprah experienced abuse as a child while living with her mother in Milwaukee, which caused her to be promiscuous and have behavior problems. She also periodically lived with her father in Nashville, Tennessee before permanently going to stay with him when she was 14. Oprah's father did not know at the time that she was pregnant. The baby was born early and died in the hospital. Oprah decided to turn her life around. She credits her father Vernon, who was once in the military and had strict discipline, for saving her life. Her father and stepmother Velma pushed Oprah to excel in school and took her regularly to church, where she was given scriptures and speeches to recite. Vernon Winfrey, who migrated from Mississippi to Nashville, Tennessee, started as a coal miner and then became a barber, 
later owning his barber shop. He also was an elected city councilman and a deacon in his church. He and his wife Velma, who studied three years at college, provided the stable environment Oprah needed that set the stage for her success. Oprah's mother, Vernita, who migrated from Mississippi to Milwaukee, Wisconsin, worked most of her life as a housemaid. Interestingly, the daughter Vernita gave up for adoption, Patricia Lofton, also worked as a maid for several years while raising her kids as a single mother. Vernita's mother, Hattie Mae, was also a maid. Despite Patricia's challenges, she didn't try to extort any money from having a famous big sister, even though she knew Oprah was her sister years before Oprah found out. Patricia felt family issues should be handled at the appropriate time and respected Oprah's privacy. This seems to have worked out in Patricia's favor, as she and Oprah now appear to be very close. Oprah does not have any living children. Both of her parents are also deceased. Her only remaining sibling is Patricia Lofton, whom she discovered as her sister in 2010. Oprah's youngest sister, Patricia, has two children, a daughter named Aquarius Lofton, born in 1980, and a son named Andre Brown, born in 1986. Oprah also has two other nieces named Alicia Hayes and Krishanda Lee Perez, who are the daughters of Oprah's deceased sister, Pat. Alicia is the owner of Pat's Rib Place, a barbecue restaurant in Milwaukee that was named after Oprah's sister who passed away. Krishanda is a writer and film producer. Oprah's other living relatives include four great nieces and nephews, Jackson Praise Perez, Shy Teresa Perez, Donovan Hayes, and Trinity Hayes. Oprah is often criticized in the news. In September 2023, Cindy Crawford criticized Oprah for how she treated her on The Oprah Show way back in 1986. Yes, almost 40 years ago. Cindy said Oprah made her feel like chattel because she complimented her on her body and asked her to stand up so everyone could see her. When Gail King, Oprah's best friend, was asked about it, she pointed out that Cindy Crawford has been on the Oprah show many, many times over the years. And as far as she knows, they have always had a good relationship. I'm sure many of us would hate to be judged on something we said almost 40 years ago. Oprah was also criticized in September of last year for asking people to donate to a Maui fundraiser for residents dealing with the wildfires in Hawaii. Even though she and The Rock Dwayne Johnson donated $10 million of their own funds to the fundraiser, critics felt she hadn't donated enough and shouldn't be asking regular people to donate. She's also been criticized about her friendship with Harvey Weinstein. Some say she knew about Weinstein's abusive ways, but Oprah has publicly denied knowing about the allegations against Weinstein before they were made public. Recently, Oprah has been criticized for not helping to ensure Taraji P. Henson was adequately paid as a black actress, especially in her role as Suge Avery in The Color Purple. However, Oprah and Taraji denied that there is a feud between them. It seems that no matter what Oprah says or does, she is criticized. However, many have also praised her for her generosity. Oprah is a philanthropist who has donated $400 million in grants through the Oprah Winfrey Charitable Foundation. Oprah's Angel Network helped to establish 60 schools in 13 countries. She's also built women's shelters and helped to build youth centers and homes. There's probably no one who knows her giving heart better than her family. Oprah supported her parents financially for decades before they passed away. She's also helped to care for her siblings and their children. Her niece, Krishanda Lee Perez, started her career as a correspondent on The Oprah Winfrey Show. She also has praised her aunt on her Instagram for her guidance and support over the years. 
Oprah initially knew little about her family tree and ancestry. However, she suspected she had no European or Native American ancestry. She was right about the European ancestry, but wrong about the Native American ancestry. Her DNA results showed her as 89% African, 8% Native American, and 3% East Asian. According to a 2022 article in New Scientist, researchers were able to test the ancient DNA from a 14,000-year-old skull found in southwest China, and the team revealed genetic similarities between DNA found in the skull and living people of East Asian ancestry, as well as Native American people. This suggests a relationship to ancient populations in East Asia that contributed to Native American ancestry. Prior to learning about her ancestry, Oprah felt she may have descended from South Africa as she felt a special connection to the Zulu people in South Africa. However, the majority of Black Americans descended from West and Central African countries. Oprah took a DNA test for the PBS show African American Lives and learned her DNA matched to the Capelli people who lived in the area that is now known as Liberia, the Bimaleke people in Cameroon, and a Bantu-speaking tribe in Zambia. Her maternal lineage is thought to begin with a Capelle woman who was sold into slavery, most likely due to wars. It was not uncommon for prisoners of war to be sold into slavery. That enslaved Capelle woman survived the transatlantic slave trade and ended up in South Carolina. Oprah's DNA results show matches to the Gula people who resided off the coast of South Carolina and Georgia. They were mostly isolated from the white culture and many individuals from that area have little to no European ancestry. Oprah had no detectable European ancestry. The Gullah people kept many of the African traditions, including using a Gullah Creole language that formed from West and Central African languages. Oprah, her parents, great-grandparents, and great-great-grandparents were born in Mississippi. Her maternal grandmother, Hattie Mae Presley, married Earlist Lee. Hattie Mae, who was born in 1900, was eight years younger than Earlis. Oprah had heard stories that her family was related to Elvis Presley, but researchers were not able to find any evidence that this was the case. Hattie Mae's parents were Nelson Presley, born in 1872, and Amanda Winters, who was born in 1874. Amanda, who would have been Oprah's great-grandmother, attended a freeman school as a child. She learned to read and write from an early age. She became a teacher and taught English to a public school for black children in the 1890s and early 1900s. Amanda was named as a trustee of a school, which was very uncommon for a woman, and especially a black woman. Amanda and her husband Nelson went on to have eight children together, including Oprah's grandmother Hattie. Amanda's parents were Pierce and Henrietta Winters, who were both born enslaved in Mississippi. Amanda did not speak much about her parents, but she let it be known that her parents would have rather died than be slaves. Amanda's mother Henrietta was born in 1855 and her father Pierce was born in 1849. Pierce's father was most likely Jesse Winters, who was born in 1831 in Georgia. He was likely enslaved by Leonard Reynolds, who was born in South Carolina in 1782 and later migrated to Georgia and then to Mississippi. Jesse Winters, born in 1831, is the furthest Oprah's ancestral paper trail goes. Oprah's maternal grandfather, Earlis Lee's parents, were Harold and Elizabeth Lee. Harold was born enslaved in 1855 in Mississippi. Harold's parents were Grace and John Lee. 
both who were born in Mississippi in 1833. Oprah's paternal grandparents, her father Vernon's parents, were Elmore Winfrey and Beatrice Woods. Elmore had eight siblings. He also had at least one child with his first wife. He had nine children with his second wife, Beatrice. Oprah's father, Vernon, was one of them. Elmore was a farmer who, Oprah said, also told great stories. He lived during the Jim Crow South. He could read, write, and understand math. He purchased 104 acres of land in 1942 and stressed the importance of education to his children, something that was later passed down to Oprah. Elmore was not a very outspoken man, but he was a strong supporter of the civil rights movement. He was described as calm, generous, and courageous. He even helped to rebuild a freedom house during times where it was very dangerous to show any support of the civil rights movement. In 1965, Elmore and his wife Beatrice housed two civil rights workers, knowing they risked their safety and the lives of their family. Elmore's parents were Ella Staples, born in 1874, and Sanford Winfrey, born in 1872 in Mississippi. Interestingly, Ella Staples is also an ancestor of the Staples Singers, a gospel soul and R&B singing group. Members of the Staples Singers were Oprah's distant cousins. Sanford Winfrey's parents, Constantine and Violet Winfrey, were enslaved. Sanford married Ella and had nine children. One of their sons, Vindy, killed his brother Grover during an argument about where Grover's son wanted to live. Sanford was a strict disciplinarian and was described as being tight with his money. He was a farmer and a teacher as well. His nickname in the community was The Professor. Sanford constantly preached about the importance of education. He was respected in the community and died owning 200 acres of land. The land is still owned by his descendants. Sanford's parents, Violet, born enslaved in 1839 in North Carolina, and Constantine Winfrey, born in 1836 in Georgia, were married in 1859 and had eight children together. Constantine was enslaved by Absalon F. Winfrey. Constantine's mother was born in South Carolina. His father was born in Georgia. Neither Constantine nor Violet could read or write at the time of the 1870 census. However, by the 1880 census, Constantine had learned to read and write. He also owned land, four cows, 13 pigs, and 35 chickens. He even moved a school for black children to his own property after there was a threat of it being shut down. Here again, we see the fight for education showing up in Oprah's lineage. Oprah comes from a fascinating lineage of people who experienced many challenges but also many triumphs. It's evident from exploring her family tree how Oprah came to be the person she is. Her family tree shows people who dreamed and believed, those who dared to try, and those who were brave enough to keep hoping and pushing. It's evident that education and land ownership played an important role in how Oprah came to be. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share if you did. Also, don't forget to come back for another great episode next week. See you soon.